Hello, my name is Sarah Maxwell, Director of Marketing at Thrive AP. At Thrive AP, we are honored to have an expansive faculty of expert speakers and APPs with impressive, impressive credentials and experience. Today, we are talking to one of our esteemed faculty members to gain their advice for thriving in an advanced practice career. Please join me in welcoming Derek Benz. Thank you. Hey, Derek, how are you doing today? Good, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. I, I'm going to launch right in and, and ask yeah. you to tell us a little bit about All yourself. Right. You know, tell us about your background, your practice, where you're practicing at. Sure. Well, I originally grew up in uh, Utica, New York, which is dead center of central New York. Um, at that time, I went to undergraduate at Ithaca College. I had uh, actually no expectations or thoughts of doing medicine at the time. Um, thought about doing more therapy or physical therapy. And I was actually doing cardiac rehabilitation at the time in college. I went and did that an internship and realized that that wasn't for me. Um, that I just went through a lot of college and realized that wasn't for me. Um, so I was in a panic. What am I going to do now? Um, <laughs> as, as you're embarking on getting out of college, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But I happened to see during that time, I happened to see a, uh, a, a PBA that was doing stress tests. Outside lab, I was like, "Well, these one—that's pretty. That's pretty cool. I, I didn't know about this, so I looked into uh, PA. At that point in time, I missed the um, missed the applications for almost all the schools because it was so late in the in the game. There was uh, still it was still open at Seton Hall and University of Medicine and Dentistry is where um, I went, and there was still open as a joint program at the time. So uh, at that time, I mean, just getting my age now, I had to use a brother to, to do my essays, had to overnight the things to get it in the, on time. Um, so I went to an interview um, when, when my father actually came with me and went on an interview and they, uh, you know, did the interview and they said, yeah, you know, they, they accepted me after my, right after my interview, which was like kind of a shocker. So my father, I come out and just talking to my dad and I'm like, he's like, so how'd it go? I'm like, well, they, ex they accepted me. He's like, what do you mean? They accept you already? I'm like, yeah. He's like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like this, this is kind of <laughs> kind of interesting. I'm like, you know, this is kind of so quick. Started, last started, right? But someone, you know, people always <laughs> told me, you know, that your 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 profession chooses you, which it really did. So I, you know, I was like, well, yeah, that's, that sounds good. I, I'm gonna do that. So I went to school and the rest is history. So that I mean, I graduated for from Seton Hall and the University of Medicine back in 1999. Um, so during my last rotation, um, I had a, uh, had an emergency department rotation, loved it. Um, and it's funny cause I was working with the medical director and at that time this went, I mean, I didn't have technology, I had books, you had, you had books stuck everywhere. So I remember <laughs> I saw a patient that had iritis and I, you know, I got out of the room, I'm looking it up and I'm trying to figure out what it is. And I'm like, and I go up to the medical director, I'm like, yeah, I think this person has iritis direct and indirect photophobia and all these things I just looked up and he's like and he's, you know I think you're right like, that's great can you call the consultant for me so he had me call the consultant and he, and he was like super impressed which I felt like I swindled him because I looked everything up <laughs> in a book right outside the room <laughs> but he, uh but uh so you know they they hired me out of there um so and I've been in emergency medicine ever since I think it just suits my personality I'm kind of high paced and um I like the variability of what's coming on. Um, so I worked in New York for about five years where I met my wonderful wife. At the time, she was a uh, ultrasound tech. Um, now she's a realtor, but at the time she was doing a, a travel assignment. She kept re-upping them. And then eventually uh, she was from the Atlanta area and I had a sister living in the Atlanta area. So we came down here and realized the quality of living was for the price of living was a lot better from where I was. And we decided to move down, down in Atlanta. So I've been here for, since um, 2004. So I've been practicing since 99, but uh, been with where I'm in since 2004. Um, eventually became a lead over our three hospital system. And then um, progressed, I'm now a regional director over um, Southeast Contracts. Um, so uh, yeah, that's where I am today and that's, Oh, that's how I got there. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny when a student asks me how I decided to do what I've been doing. It's, I like almost feel bad. I'm like, well, it's 
not exactly what you expected, you know, I <laughs> kind of fell into it, but I love it. I mean, and been doing it for whatever, what, 24 years now. So uh, I think, I think it, it suits me. <laughs> I think, I think I've, uh, I've chose it, my, the path chose me correctly, I, I should say. Well, that's, I think that's actually more real most times is not everybody has such a cookie cutter direct path. And, you know, what I went to school for was not exactly what I'm doing today. Pieces of it I use, right? But the same thing, the path just kind of chose me. And I was like, gosh, I'm just so passionate about this part of business. I'm so passionate about doing this. And I love this. That that didn't exist even when I was in college. You know, when you think about obviously me and marketing, digital marketing really wasn't a thing back then. So yeah. path just finds you. Sure. Yeah. And I had a very different experience as far as I was in Cleveland and then came to Nashville. So the cost of living thing was a little bit different for me. A little, a little, different. <laughs> a little bit of an opposite flip. <laughs> right. So funny. you're one of our, our newer speakers, which is super exciting. And one of our newer uh, programs, our emergency medicine program, which is really exciting for us to get to launch, especially because we were able to do it in partnership with AAENP. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what attracted you to joining the program? What attracted you to working with Thrive AP and, and being a part of Transition to Practice in, in the way that we do it? Well, you know, I think it's interesting. I mean, I just uh, like the education of APPs. I think it's it's a great opportunity to give back. And, um, you know, it's always when I was a student, I think it was, it was just so nice to have someone that would take the time and, you know, because I just... Some people are just sponges. They just want to take it all in. And that's just something that excites me when you have something like that. You, and I think you, you, you don't realize how much you know until you get a student and you start thinking, you know, I'm like, yeah, I, you start talking and talking and talking and you realize that they don't know even the, the basis sometimes of things. And, you know, it's, it's amazing when you take that time and start really verbalizing it out loud, you're like, man, I guess I, I do have something to offer where when sometimes you don't have a, a student or somebody that's that eager, you might not realize how much you have to offer. Um, and, and most people with experience, they do, but they just don't don't realize it at the time, you know? And I think it's, you know, awesome, nice to, to get, you know, with people that are fresh and eager to listen and learn. Um, it kind of helps, you know, help people along their educational journey, especially, you know, the people that are they're new. That's I think that's the great, but it's also, you know, nice when you have students just to have that interaction, you know, you have that, you know, you find out what you don't know too. If someone will ask you something like, hmm, I don't know, but let's figure that out together. Or, you know, when, when I was, well, go look at this and, you know, tell me about it tomorrow. I don't do that to people, but it's like, hey, why don't we both look this up and try to figure it out and see, see it's a, that's a great question. I just don't know the answer. So it's, and it keeps you on your, and I, I like it just because it keeps me on my toes, keeps me current, making sure I'm, I'm checking up with the most current things as well. So I think that's what that's what kind of brought me to the uh, idea of doing some education as well. It's mutually beneficial in that way. Yeah. So in your career, I think you said 22 years, 25 years? Is that what you said? 24 years now, 24. Gotcha. That's probably why this, <laughs> this is, that's why I got this shine of the light <laughs> off my head right now. You know, the grays are coming in, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Um, during that time, you know, I mean, 24 years, it's, you know, that's a, that's a good amount of time. What is something that you would pinpoint as being one of your more noteworthy career accomplishments or something that you're just really proud of? You know, I, I think this, this is probably going to be probably different than most people. Um, I really think it's kind of just the clinical gestalt that you developed over time. That sometimes you just walk in a room and you know, hey, something's something's not right or you just might pick up on something that normally wouldn't you wouldn't and it, you know I think so and it's it's being able to use that and help people in their time need like someone a friend An example here this this is my noteworthy accomplishment probably different than most people but this is what's noteworthy to me and what made me feel good about things you know I had you know a friend my daughter's friend came into the emergency department you know little girl at the time or this little girl scared but you know, short breath, has asthma. Parents like, oh, you know, she has some asthma. She's just not breaking. She's just not getting better. You know, and all the literature at the time is let's let's not do X-rays on these all these asthmatic kids. You don't want to expose them to radiation and all that. 
But you know, in row two, Sat was, you know, it was okay. It wasn't perfect, but you know, she had a little bit of pain in her chest and it just wasn't, there's just something not right, you know? All things lead to you probably shouldn't do an x-ray on this kid, you know, treat her, send her home. But I, if you ever practice medicine, if something's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong with somebody you know. So yeah, so it's like, you know, something's just not right. I'm gonna do it. I wanna do an x-ray on her, you know. I this I'm talking to the parents, I know the parents. So I do an x-ray. This little girl has a pneumothorax, which you know is a collapsed lung, you know, so this poor little girl, she's gonna need a chest tube, she's gonna need to come in the hospital, so it's just Poor thing, you know, to talk to the parents and she's scared. And, but you know, you get everything taken care of, and she you knows she's taken care of. And that's not that's not my noteworthy accomplishment. My noteworthy accomplishment was two weeks later, I go to my daughter's school, I would do science experiments with the kids and stuff like that. And she comes up and gives me the biggest hug, you know, which is that's that's my noteworthy accomplishment. You know, that she's give comes up, gives me this huge hug. My daughter's kind of looking at me like, what's kind of odd. You know, other kids will give me high fives and other things like that, but it was different and she noticed it was different, but she didn't know that I took care of her because of HIPAA, I don't tell her. Later on, the parents, you know, were talking when the girls are around and then my daughter kind of put it together. That's that's noteworthy to me, just helping someone and the, it, it was it was like pure that she was, she was thankful, you know, and it was, and she, and it was, it was just something that was pure. So that that's my noteworthy accomplishment. It's not anything that I've accomplished, you know, you know, through work or degrees and all that. It's that, that's what's counseling to me. Gosh, that's, that's powerful. That is different than what I normally hear. That's, but that's really meaningful. You got to see the whole process too, right? Being, having that connection, seeing that, you know, usually I would imagine with emergency medicine specifically too, they leave and then that's kind of it. But in this case, you yeah. got to kind of see that, the real impact that you made on, on her life and her parents' lives. It was so that's like I said, it's probably different than most people say, but that's more accomplishment than any degrees or letters after your name or yeah, that's beautiful. With that, that might lead into this. Um, you know, what is your greatest passion in your career and in your role? Um, you know, I have a passion. I, I do. I still love taking take care of patients clinically. You know, it's the opportunity once again to, to to take care, and it's it's always rewarding me to take care of people. You know, I mean. Another another random story. I mean, this is recently. I had a friend. I was working, and about to be done with my shift. A friend called me. Hey, my dad's uh, coming in, and you know he's you know I knew I know him. I'm friends with him. Gosh, I'm, I've been scheming with the guy. You know, so it's not like I didn't know him. So I'm like, oh right, yeah, I'll check on. She's like, just check on, him, make sure he's okay. So check on him. He's had some cardiac issues. He looks fine. He's like, hey, he gives a come give me a big hug. You know, we're talking about talking things. He looks fine. I'm like, yeah, let's let's see, let's get some things taken care of, you know. And I, I, of course, I'm not going to leave now. I'm about to leave my shift, so I'm sitting there talking to him. Then I go out, and things are getting getting settled. I know his history; he's got a pretty strong cardiac history. And I go back in the room to check on him, and he is 180 degree different. I'm like, oh my gosh, he looks terrible. He's crumping. And I'm like, this person I know. I'm like, oh my gosh. The EKG, if initial EKG is normal, his EKG is still normal. I mean, let's repeat an EKG, do a quick, quick EKG, still normal. But, you know, because, you know, he looked, I know his history, a cardiologist doesn't want to come in at this point in time. They don't, because the EKG is normal. But, you know, you, sometimes you just got, you, you got to advocate for your patient. And of course, somebody, you know, I'm, I'm obviously pushing harder. But, you know, we get him to come in, he goes to the cath lab, got to get extent. You know, he had this real disease, was really going on. But those things, that, those are things that give me, give me passion, you know, taking care of somebody and, and making a difference, you know, and obviously it's, it's more impactful when it's somebody you know, but still it's just something that, that that's what gives me a passion. You know, but also not just that, um, I really like the underserved population that comes in the emergency department because um, they're just so appreciative of what you do. I mean, some people come to the emergency department, they don't have any other resources. They have nowhere else to go, but they're so appreciative when you take care of them. You know, so so I do I do like taking care of the underserved population as well, and as well as you know the students that come in. It's 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 nice to give back. I think we talked about that. That's another passion to to be able to to mentor our students and and bring people along and help them in their career. That's another passion as we talked about before. 
Well, and speaking a little bit about supporting and mentoring APPs, what would you say makes, what are, what are the good attributes or attributes people should have or look for in a mentor? Um, patience, I think you need patience. Uh, patience from, from the mentor, but from the student also, you know, sometimes, you know, you can't give, give them an answer right away. Um, you know, I'm not a walking encyclopedia, so I think patience on their part, but on my part as well. And realizing that everybody has different levels of experience and everybody has had different levels of engagement. Some people you're just gonna, you're gonna, they're just gonna soak everything up. You love being around them. You love talking to them. And some you gotta, you gotta pull it out of them. You're like, okay, come on, let's, you know, I know you got more questions than this. Let's throw them out at me. You know, <laughs> what do you think about this? Sometimes you gotta stimulate the questions. Um, so I think that's it's patience, but knowing that everybody's different and how you have to pull some things out of them because there's questions. And you know what on their face, sometimes you gotta pull it out of someone. Some people you gotta say, <laughs> some people that they'll bring them all up, they're great. But also um, and I, uh, is knowing what you don't know. That's the other thing, you know, you don't always have the answers and it's okay. It's, and I think it's always okay to say, I don't know um, if someone asks a question, you know, but the good thing is in the age of technology, you don't have to pull out the old tin alley, which is the old emergency medicine book. You know, you gosh, you just pull it up on the web, you know, and you, and you find out where you can find things. And it's always nice, you know, to be able to learn together. I mean, students can, especially students that are they're close to the end of rotations, sometimes they got new and cutting edge things that, you know, that maybe I'm not as abreast on, you know, you can always learn together. I'm not, when you're mentoring someone, it's a two way street. I'm learning too. Yeah. That's like we said earlier, you know, they weren't teaching 90% of what I do today in my everyday yeah. job when I was in college. So these, you know, the, the next generation has that, uh, that kind of, I don't know, privilege, I guess, of learning what's going on today. So then we get to benefit from that too, but then they also get to benefit from your years of experience and knowledge that, that they just don't have. Yeah, sure. sure. So when we're talking about not being a walking encyclopedia any longer, <laughs> you know, what are some of the, maybe the key journals or apps or something that you use to make sure you are staying abreast of the latest and the best new trends that uh, should be implemented in an emergency? Hands down, up to date. Uh, up to date is, that's, the best. I mean, that's where my lecture stuff comes from. That's where it's that's where uh, it's up to date. I mean, it's it's in the name. Up to date. But <laughs> so anything you can find, it's all the latest research, it's the latest information. Most hospitals will have. Well, I don't know. The hospitals that I'm part of have it where you can look it up. I mean, they want you to be up to date, obviously. Um, plus, you can see me when you're when you're looking things up, which is great because you know you're you're everybody needs seeing me, and if you can do it with when you're looking things up in in real time. But hands down, that's the best thing. Um, other things I like is an, an app. Um, actually, on one of my upcoming lectures, I have a lot of um, screenshots from an app. Well, it's not the app or the computer version of um, MD Calc. Because a lot of things we use now are evidence-based medicine. They're decision-making tools in the emergency department that you can use that can decrease your liability, decrease your, your chances of any kind of litigation because you're using the most up-to-date up to and using evidence-based medicine. And these, these calculators, there's tons of them out there. You just gotta know which ones are for your specialty. I mean, emergency medicine, there's tons of them out there. And I just love those calculators. I mean, just because you can reference them in your chart, you can utilize them and you can know who's safe to send home, who needs to be admitted, or at least have good evidence-based medicine that you can discuss with the patient and make shared decision-making. So those are, my, those are my favorite. I've heard up to date a lot, but the second one is a new one. So yeah, I always tell me it's wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Well, pull it up. It's an app and it's a great app to have, or it's a computer based. There you go. Well, so I always like to end with the same question because I think it's one of the more powerful ones. If you could give any advice to the APPs of the future, what advice would you give them? Start early um look at everything look at every ekg sometimes because nowadays ekgs come with reports on them x-rays come reports from rate from in the emergency department it comes from radiologists Just look at them get used to cover up the ekg interpretation interpret it yourself look at the chest x-ray interpret it yourself look at it look at every x-ray look at the cts because when you get used to seeing those the more you see the more normals you see every even every normal Look at the more normals you see, 
when you see an abnormal, it's gonna jump out at you. And you might not know what it is, and that's okay, but you know it's not normal, and you know you have to look up somewhere. So I think just so important, and, and listening to every patient, you know I mean? Listening as in, put your stethoscope on them, listen for murmurs, listen to the lungs. I mean, intently, it's, it's so easy nowadays to, with EKGs and everybody being hooked up to a monitor to, to x-rays that, you know, a lot of times, physical exams kind of almost become passe, which it shouldn't be. But the more you do, the more you look at normals, you know, you, you might share a lung exam, like, wait a second, something's wrong here. That's, that's not right. That's, I'm not used to that. The more you hear normals, the more the, those abnormals are going to stand out to you. So, and then, you know, it's also important, I think is you need to put yourself in the patient's shoes. Your patients don't want to be there. 90% of the patients don't want to be in the emergency department. Put yourself in their shoes. I mean, have some empathy. You got to understand they don't want to be there. And then treat them as, I mean, treat them if that's your family member. Is that your family member? If that was there, how would they, how would you want them being treated? Treat them as you would want a family member treated. And then, you know, probably finally, I mean, if you're looking for advancement, things like that, say yes. Just when you get involved, say yes. Someone can, hey, can you help me work on a project for front end management? Yes. Do you, can you see if we can do this? Yes. How do you, if you want to advance in things, get involved, say yes. And, you know, especially when you're young, you have the time. Those are, that's my, I guess that's, that's all my words of wisdom. I think that's uh, about to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think all of those tips kind of speak to what you were saying earlier about, I just felt like there was something more, they say not to do this, but I wanted to do the x-ray. My intuition was telling me to do that next thing and to take this extra look. And it turned out to be correct doing all of those things that you just said early on in your career or how are you going to get that experience to develop that intuition and that gut instinct to say no i'm going to advocate i know that there's more here that could be done so that's how you develop it so i think those are wonderful tips and and suggestions for how people can be better clinicians have better patient outcomes and just and move further in their career and, and reach their their goals yeah i agree well, thank you so much for joining us today and taking time out of a very busy day to to chat with me and allow us to get to know you a little better. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Well, and thank you everyone else for joining us and stay tuned to meet more of our faculty. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.